Hello, hello, hello. Solutions to the classical electric dipole. Here is an electric dipole, charge minus Q and charge plus Q, a distance D apart. Right in the middle between the two I define X equals zero. All the X axis very, very far away is a point capital R and capital R is way larger than D. And even further away, <laughs> there is a point on the x-axis, x equals 2r, twice as far away as this point. And my question is, what is the ratio of the electric field here due to these two charges and the electric field here due to these two charges? We already know that the electric field here will be in this direction because the minus q charge is closer to this point than the plus q. So also here the electric field will be in this direction. Now, it's clear that the electric field at this point, only from this point plus q, will fall off as 1 over r squared. Coulomb's law. And so also the electric field at point R, due to discharge alone to the minus Q, that will also fall off as 1 over R square. But now we have a minus E field, and we have to add that vectorially to a plus E field. And now since capital R is much, 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 much smaller than D, the dependence of the E field will now fall off as 1 over R to the power 3. It's not so intuitive why it is 3, but you have to agree that it must fall off faster than 1 over R squared. And if you don't see that, remember what I just said, that each charge individually, the E field falls off as 1 over R squared. But they are in opposite directions, and the difference is very small. And the net result then is that the E fields, in case of electric dipoles, as long as you stay on this axis, falls off as 1 over R cubed. I'll show it to you. You ready? Okay. Coulomb's law for the plus charge. The distance from R to the plus charge is R plus D over 2. Electric field due to the minus charge. You see that here, the distance from this point to minus q is r minus d over 2. So this is the e plus contribution in this direction. This is the e minus contribution in that direction. And this one will be larger than this one. We argued already why. So now the net electric field at point r is the sum of these two. I bring this r outside, so we get here 4 pi epsilon 0 r squared. This then becomes r plus d over 2r. And I do the same here. So I get here r squared. This one becomes 1, not r, but 1 plus 2 over, 1 plus d over 2r. So we get an r squared here, we get 1 minus d over 2r. With a square, of course. Now I single out the term 1 plus d over 2r to the power minus 2. And 1 minus d over 2r to the minus 2. And if you have a little bit of knowledge of algebra, 
you know that to a very high degree of accuracy, 1 plus x to the minus 2, if x is way, way smaller than 1, is 1 minus 2x. And 1 minus x to the power minus 2, if x is way, way smaller than 1, is 1 plus 2x. And I've done that here. So I'm going to replace now this term by an r square outside, also here by an r square outside, and the inside then becomes this. So you see here the net results. You see this r square here, which I've taken out. And you see, as I promised, here you see 1 plus d over r minus 1 minus d over r. And the algebra of this is trivial. The plus 1 eats up the minus 1, and the plus d over r with minus minus d over r becomes 2d over r. And so the net field at that location, capital R, becomes 2qd divided by 4 pi epsilon 0 r to the third. And the accuracy is extremely high if r is thousands and thousands, tens of thousands times larger than d, which is the case here. So this is the result. So the conclusion is that the E-field at location r in this direction must be eight times larger than the E-field at the position which is twice as far away because of this r cubed. I predict that most of you will probably have this. But I wouldn't be surprised either if many of you sent me a solution that they believed that the electric field here is four times higher than at the location to R. Because they are so used to think that electric fields fall off as 1 over R square. Yes, that's true for single charges, but not for electric black poles. This phenomenon that the net force falls off as 1 over r cubed is well known also in astronomy, what we call tidal forces. Here we have the Earth, mass m1, radius r1. And at a distance very far away, little r is the moon, mass m2. And little r is way, way larger than r1, if you want to know how much larger, 60 times larger, roughly. The force at which the moon and the earth attract each other is trivial, m1, m2, g divided by this r squared. However, this point of the Earth is closer to the Moon than that point of the Earth. And so the pool here is somewhat larger than the pool there. And that has the result that the Earth becomes slightly obliged, like the green curve that I have here. And the difference between these two forces falls off as 1 over r cube, that same r cube, for exactly the same reasons that the electric fields of electric dipoles, as long as you stay on the same axis, also falls off as 1 over r cubed. So that is responsible for tides on Earth. And not only on Earth, but on all binary star systems, or all systems, stars with planets, there are tidal forces. And in our case, the Moon's influence on us is larger than the influence of the Sun on us, so that's why I've only taken the Moon here.
So if you were here on Earth, it's high tide for you. Then since the Earth rotates, let's say in this direction, when you're here, it's low tide for you. Twelve hours after you were here, you were here, you have high tide again. And twelve hours later, you have high tide again. So very roughly, you have high tide every twelve hours, low tide every twelve hours. Since the Earth is also moving relative to the Moon, the Moon is around the Earth, it's not exactly 12 hours, but that's irrelevant right now. The basic idea is clear here, that since the Earth rotates, if we assume that the Moon is not moving, then between here and here it will be 6 hours, between here and there 12 hours, between here and there again you are low tide, Six hours, and between here and here, another six hours. I would recommend that you use Google and look up tidal forces and see actual simulations, which are very nice, whereby you see objects rotating under influence of an object very far away. So you see the oblateness and then you will see if the object rotates that the oblateness, of course, stays in the same direction. It's very interesting. So look up tidal forces and by all means look up electric dipole fields. Keep in mind that if you were to look at this point or at this point, that the E field does not fall off as 1 over R cube. It is only very accurately 1 over R cubed as long as you stay on the line that connects the two charges. All right. Today is October 12th. I have no idea when I will post the solutions. I have no idea when I post the problem. Maybe end of November, maybe in December. So I cannot tell you yet about how many correct solutions I have received. I can make a prediction. I predict more than 60% correct solutions, maybe even 70. We'll see. And we'll be friends, of course. That is always a given.